Thank you for staying with us on the news this hour. Let's turn our attention to River State, where the federal government says it is implementing strategies to power one million vehicles with compressed and natural gas within the next three years. The drivers of this initiative explain details of the procedure at a key player's engagement in Port Hackett. A correspondent, Uchi Okuro, reports. The cost of fuel such as petrol and diesel, the availability and damage to the environment is a major talking point. With the global advocacy for energy transition gaining momentum, the presidential CNG initiative is leading the charge towards sustainable energy solutions through compressed natural gas which is considered to be cheaper, cleaner and safer. <laughs> they are hoping that state governments private sector, industry players, and organizations from the South-South region gathered here would buy into this vision. There's enough demand for natural gas. What we need to do now is to put in place the technology, the pipeline, the virtual pipeline, the mother station, the foiling station. When we convert our vehicle, one million vehicles, when we convert it, we save the country about 2.5 to $3 billion a year. And that is just one million vehicles. That will save us 6 million liters a day. And that is money that we should can spend on hospitals, we can spend on roads, as the case may be. CNG powered Nigeria is reported to have the largest gas reserve in Africa, but also ranks second amongst countries that flare the largest amount of the resource. To produce gas. The experts say achieving maximum gas utilization in the country holds great potential for the economy, starting from the cost of transportation. It doesn't make sense that we should be exporting our natural gas to Japan, and Japan then exports their petrol gas to us, and then we now import petrol that is much, much more expensive than natural gas to fuel the cars, cheap cars that Japan have sent us because they have our natural gas. The president said, no, 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 we are not going to keep doing the same thing. We will, not, we will stop subsidizing poverty, importing uh, uh, unemployment and exporting jobs, and we will now focus on using our own uh, natural gas to drive our, our transportation sector. Nigeria's future in gas looks bright, but with all that optimism comes concerns about sensitization, safety, and sustainability. Yes, there's gas all over the place in Nigeria, but if it's not built, if it's not piped, if it's not taken out, then it's not available. The presidential CNG initiative says it would need 250 billion naira annually to achieve its conversion target of 1 million vehicles in three years. But outside budgetary allocations, much of the funding in the long term is expected to come from private sector investments. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Harcourt. Meanwhile, residents of Ogun State are asking Governor Dapwa Biodu to urgently fix the Lambe Akute Road. They fear that the palliative repairs they are doing on the road will be washed away by the flood in coming months. Senior correspondent Sarah Ayeko reports. Living in border communities in Ogun State has become torturous. For decades, with successive state governments making promises and failing to fulfill any of them. This is the Fesowako Dubale community. Their major concern is the 34 kilometer Akute Joko Road in Ifo local government area of Ogun State. From Yakoyo to Alagbole, Akute Ajo, Lambe, Okiaro, commuting is difficult and life threatening, not just for motorists but for commercial motorcyclists who populate the area. Just a few brave commercial bus drivers can ply this route because of the deplorable condition of access roads linking the communities to Lagos State. Using a commercial motorcyclist appears the most accessible mode of transportation for residents. We've been managing ourselves. No, uh, no proper government assistance. And this will link a lot from you to down to Akute, down to Olambe, down to Okiaro, down to Matogun, down to uh, Agbado, down to Ijoko, down to Ogbae, your railway crossing. So it's a link road that's supposed to live directly to uh, Songwata and to Jiroko. These border communities are populated with old civil servants, some of which have started living here since 1979. According to them, talks on constructing good roads in the community dates back to 1984. But it is saddening that 40 years after the conception stage, 
the Akuti Lambe Joko Road is still a dream in the pipeline. They are not asking for too much. It is just their duty. Job creations, youth empowerment, giving off the basic social amenities. It is their duty. So when you look at this road, it is so bad that when it's rain, for you to cross from one side of the road to the other side, you might have to trek about 100 meters, 150 meters to go and get a better place to cross. The job we are facing here right away is this our road, as you can see it. The scope of the self-help project is four kilometers out of the 34-kilometer Akute Joko Road project. Motorists plying these routes say the government of Ogun State has paid no attention to their several complaints as many of the roads have become death traps. This project might have brought some kind of relief to residents. But now, as the rainy season kicks in, it is worsened by the rains and flood waters. Only recently, when the first rain came, our people, our, our children, spent four hours navigating from here to Akute, passing through this road. Not to talk of a number of people that have had accidents of this road. Residents of the Ifesoapo CDC decided to embark on self a project, but they don't have enough resources out of 106 million naira. But they don't have enough resources to take on the White Elephant Project. Since efforts to reach out to the Ifo local government, state government and its agencies have been met with little or no action. What you are seeing here today is a product of self-effort. Each an individual, CDA, and where well many individuals contributed to what you are seeing today. It's not competition with government. It is a palliative. What we are saying, palliative is just a relief. I didn't enter him before government would draw their attention to our area here. We are a community association. We are not a pleasure group. We collaborate with government. We are partners in progress. Uh, so, and that's why you, can, you, you, not, you cannot find us protesting, carrying people to come and carry placard and all these things. Residents are hoping with this latest appeal, the federal government, through the Ministry of Works, Governor Dakwabiodu and his cabinet, will finish the decades long road project. Now let's go to Oyo State, where the government has opened the first phase of the newly constructed Lodo Bridge in Ibadan. The bridge was opened for use by the state's commissioner for works, Dahud Sagondoye, uh, amid chairs and tribulation by residents of the community. Senior reporter Olaide Iwali has more in this report. For residents and road users who ply the popular Olodo Bridge in Ibadan, the wait is now over. The road was thrown into a deplorable state in July 2023 after a heavy flood led to the collapse of the bridge, which was under construction, leaving road users with no other choice than to use alternative routes. Following the completion of the first phase of the bridge, motorists can now use the road while the next phase is expected to be completed in due course. The major features of the bridge being open today for use to our people include, among others, the piling works, construction of central piers, precast beams and slab, returning and retain wall, deck, parapet wall, approach slab and media. The pavement at the approaches of the bridge is made up of 200 mm thick lateral surface, 200 mm thick stone base, 50 mm asphaltic binder. There is a tight traffic management policy that is put in place to ensure that in the morning when the traffic is heavy, we are going to use two of the lanes going to work. And when we are coming back, two against one. The Olodo Bridge connects Ibadan with Iwo in Ocean State and the Ibadan Iwo Shogo Road spanning 35 kilometers. Residents and road users expressed joy over the development as they recall past experiences while the road was still under construction. them to help us finish the other road in good time so that it will be easier for us to be using. To these traders, it's a new dawn for them as they anticipate high patronage following the development. Finally, 
a sigh of relief for residents and commuters of Olodo community. The repair of the road will not only ensure seamless movement of commuters and residents, but also contribute significantly to the socio-economic development of the community. Olaido Yewale, TVC News, Ibadan. A bit of health now. Psychiatrist in Nigeria demanding an end to the decriminalization of individuals who attempt to commit suicide. The position came to the fore at a session with lawmakers on the need to prioritize and implement the Mental Health Act. National Assembly correspondent Joke Adisa reports. In January 2023, former President Muhammad Buhari signed the National Mental Health and Substance Abuse Bill into law. The law replaces the outdated Lunacy Act of 1958. It provides for the enhancement and regulation of mental health and substance abuse services. To the law establishing the act. This session at the instance of the Committee on Special Health Care is to feel the pulse of leading actors in the business of mental health and work out modalities for effective implementation of the act. The committee calls for partnership in addressing mental health challenges and other related health cases. Has the mental health fund established as required by the law? What are the modality in place for to ensure that mental health treatment is integrated and provided for every public health facilities in the country? All these posers or questions are directed to the are directed to the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Services, Mega Director of Hospitals, Head of Department of Official Agencies responsible for the implementation of the Act to tell Nigeria why, why the National Mental Health Act is not being implemented. The Association of Psychiatrists in Nigeria wants a review of the Criminal and Penal Code, which still decriminalizes suicide attempts. It calls for the implementation of the Mental Health Act. Primary health care may not necessarily be uh, ideal, but a community-based primary health uh, uh, reactation centers will be the appropriate thing. Legal states have started. I think they have a big center uh, established there. Establishing them in the primary health care where adequate human material resources are lacking will not be appropriate. APN will recommend that we follow the Mental Health Act to prescribe prescription of making it community-based. Trained staff at the primary health care center can then refer identified uh, clients. The House Committee on Special Health Care is one of the new committees created by the Third House of Representatives. Its goal is to provide a requisite legislative framework for improved health care delivery in Nigeria. Joke Adza, TVC News, Abuja. And that's the news this hour. For more updates on the stories we are monitoring, you can visit our website on www.tvcnews.tv. You can also follow us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and on X at TVC News NG on YouTube. We're live at TVC News Nigeria. Thanks for watching.